Good morning and welcome to Friday with the Rev. I'm Greg Johnson. I'm the president and CEO of GJP International, Greg Johnson Partnerships. And I want to welcome you once again to this Friday morning conversation. As many of you know, this began as a result of a series of uh, visits in Southeast Asia, where I had the privilege of meeting with people from many, many countries all over the world, talking about that topic which I adore, family caregiving. And before I go any further, I want to say, because for some of you, the day is sort of coming to an end, a very happy and blessed International Day of Women. Yes, we are celebrating International Day of Women. I was at the UN yesterday as they are preparing for literally a two-week uh, conference and focus. Thousands and thousands of people will be coming in, and I'm delighted that family caregiving is indeed part of that event. That's one of the great joys of living here in New York City. So welcome and thank you, and we can't talk about family caregiving without the role of women. For indeed, most of us learn early, early on caring and caregiving from women. Happily, that moved on. It certainly then went into the LGBT world. And more and more and more studies are being done of men who are serving as family caregivers. I know some terrific men who have been incredible and are incredible family caregivers. So a very special day as we celebrate the International Day of Women. I always like to just remind you of ways in which you can contact me, and I do that at the beginning of the broadcast because some people are still uh, coming in and joining us, so I find this the easiest time to do it. There are two ways to reach me, and I'm always so grateful for your comments, for your questions, for your your thoughts. Um, this is a dialogue uh, done in this format, but uh, I would like very much for you to be in contact with me. One of the easiest ways is through Emblem Health, where I serve as Senior Advisor to the President and CEO, Karen Ignani. My email address there is gjohnson at emblemhealth dot com. And then also, I have the privilege of serving at the Marble Collegiate Church here in New York City, and my email there is gjohnson at marblechurch.org.org with the church. So please feel free to write to me and share with me. That's what it's all about. And I'm going to be talking about that today because the topic is very much something that has been very much in focus this week. I also want to remind you that the broadcasts uh, from Friday with the Rev, as well as some other wonderful things that I've had the privilege of dealing with and taping with some of the really wonderful experts we have here in New York on family caregiving, can be found on my YouTube channel. Now, the YouTube channel address or name, I'm not certain which word I'm supposed to use, or title, is Family Caregiving with the Rev. So please take a look at it. It's a wonderful way to go back and look at some broadcasts. Or if someone with whom you're dealing, someone in your realm, whether it's professionally or uh, personally, there's a topic that might indeed help them, help you, might serve as a bridge, might serve as a vehicle for a conversation that can be more difficult to deal with. So, now this morning, the topic is a prayer that I remember very well writing. We again are in Peace Be Still, Prayers and Affirmations for Family Caregivers. And this prayer is entitled, Love love. So now join me as we listen, as we pray, as we share together in love. What a precious picture. What a blessed truth. All around us are those we love here on earth now. Those who have gone before us, 
those on the next plane of life beyond mortal sight and sound. Yet in spirit, we are one forever. Help us draw upon their strength when we feel overwhelmed, used, abused, mistreated, and depressed. Let their spirits surround us, motivate us, bless us, and revive us once again. Together we are marching through this earthly life, helping, loving, caring for one another, striving to do unto others as we would have them do unto us. Let us be the hands, the ears, the arms, the heart, the smile, and the hugs of the divine giving love, joy, and service one to the other until that blessed day when instead of living on earth, knowing that God is with us here, we shall be with God in eternity. Forever we are blessed and with the blessed of all time. Amen and amen. And from Reverend Marion, these affirmations. I fill my mind with thoughts of love, service, and joyous expectation. I am always ready to be loving, forgiving, and understanding. No matter what challenges I am experiencing in the outer world, I know that God's gentle, loving presence within me is comforting me, loving me, and healing me, and all is well. Drawing from an inner reservoir of God's love, I express love and harmony in all my relationships. And from Corinthians, let all that you do be done in love. This prayer I wrote in Bali several, several years ago when I was doing this book. And it was at a time of a holiday that happens usually twice a year, if I'm not mistaken, Galungan and Kuningen. And it's the time when, as it were, the spirits are blessed there's a great feeling of the spirits having been with us. That's not that different in its origin as when we talk in the Christian church of the communion of saints, those who have gone before, those who are coming yet after. All one, for we are indeed not human beings trying to have a spiritual experience, but we are spiritual beings, having come from and returning to, locked in time and space, right here. Now, in the world of family caregiving, and it's the reason I use the topic of this being about family caregiving, faith, and spirituality, many, many issues are raised by caregivers. This can be an extremely difficult time. Often as I'm counseling with people in the world of family caregiving, it's not all that different from the things that I'm doing when I'm dealing at the Addiction Institute or dealing with others in the world of addiction. These difficult moments, and they're, they tend to have a, a health-related issue that gets it started but they cause questions. People who have been wounded by other people's faith and religion often begin asking some of the big questions, and that's good. But they need to know that there's an environment in which they can do it, something that's not about judgment. And there's so much of that, and one only needs to read newspapers today. But they need to know that there's a loving environment. And they can be on that journey 
One of the things I love in the world of Alcoholics Anonymous is the phrase, God, as you understand. The gift is, we will never understand all of God, for God is so much more. But we get to know a piece, and that piece begins to grow. And then as we grow, we may feel changes in that. That's okay. We're growing into the great divine. And so as people have trouble with certain words, certainly G-O-D can cause lots of trouble for people. But we're not here to insist that a specific word is used. Higher power, the universe, spirit, all God as we understand. And my favorite word is love, because it transcends and is at the root of every faith tradition, along with the very essence of family caregiving, which is golden rule living. So I urge you, as you're dealing with folks, be gentle, be kind, and be inclusive. For we are all on a journey. And in family caregiving, and this is why I wrote this particular prayer, there are two thoughts. Those who have gone before us, I feel their presence. I know many of you do. They're angels for us. What are angels? They're messengers. They're surrounding us. They're helping us. And we can rely on that. We don't need to live in that world because that's not the world we're in. We're here and now. But in spirit, we are one. And messages, messages come to us of love, of strength. As we remember someone, as we remember something they taught us. And what does that mean? It means exactly what has happened in life. We today are standing on the shoulders of those who have gone before us. As I look at my journey just here in New York, Dr. Peel, Dr. Caliandro, Dr. Brown, Dr. Boss, blessed to stand on the shoulders of these giants and many, many others. Those happen to be people who have been at the Marble Collegiate Church. But I stand on the shoulders of many, many other people whom I continue to learn from, whom I continue to read, because it is a blessing and a strength to each and every one of us. Now, this past week, I had two particular instances of caregiving as being that point that really brought up big questions in the lives of people, of caregivers. And it brought me to think that I wanted within this text of love to talk about in doing caregiving, what are things that we are learning? In one case, it was a gentleman who had cared for two other gentlemen, one of whom died. And the question that came up so strongly for him, because they're all of a similar age, my age and a little older, who will care for me? That is a question that caregivers of all ages do ask. And it can be one of the blessings of doing caregiving. For in the act of caring for another, we become aware of have I told people these specific things for me? Do I have things written down? Have I cared for the documents? Are my medications listed? Do I have a hospital go bag? Those are very practical situations that we need for another. But so often we're so busy giving it away that we don't take a moment to do it for ourselves. And I urge you, to consider that. Now, many also within the world of family caregiving, some of the 
finest organizations, I immediately share the care comes to mind, but also uh, friends indeed for so many years. These were people involved in caring for others. Many times it was their own loved ones. And they found areas in which resources were not available, in which support wasn't available, in which counseling was not available. And what did they do? They started it. They began it, and it has grown and grown. I'm constantly impressed as I travel around the world. The many programs that are available, and you can basically do carers or family caregiving with just about any country, and you will get programs, many of them very much grassroots. Where have they come from? They've come from the journey that a person is having as they've cared for someone else and have found something that was absolutely missing, something that was needed, and they were called into that work and have blessed so many, many people. Now, I want to share with you two items that particularly bless my life, and I hope they will bless yours. One is probably one of my most, most favorite passages in the Bible. And it comes from 1 John 4, 16. All who live in love live in God. And God lives in them. All who live in love live in God. And God lives in him. A very powerful, assuring, and blessed statement. And then I want to read for you. This goes back to the 1500s, but it's from Teresa of Avila. And I'm using the word Christ in its most inclusive sense, as she has here. But I think it's such a wonderful statement about family caregivers the world over. Christ has no body now, but yours. No hands, no feet on earth, but yours. Yours are the eyes through which Christ looks compassionately into the world. Yours are the feet with which Christ walks to do good. Yours are the hands with which Christ blesses the world. And it is so. Let us remember that and let us share that as we go forward in love this coming week. And as we close, I want to read to you on Tuesday in Unity's Daily Word was exactly our closing for this morning. I express peace, joy, and love in my relationships. Love is the only power in the universe. As the unconditional free flow of divine love surrounds, comforts, fulfills, and sustains me, I know that I am loved now and always. All people are spiritual beings created in the image and likeness of divine love. Whether or not we are aware of it, our very nature is love. I love myself just as I am, for there is no one in the world exactly like me. I am unique, spiritually whole, perfect and complete. I love all that I am, for all that I am is spiritual substance. Today I pause and remember the words of Jesus. You are the light of the world. From that root awareness, I lovingly allow the light in me to shine for all. Kindness comes naturally to me and flows effortlessly through me. I express my highest and best self 
and from Matthew, you are the light of the world. Shine on, family caregivers. God bless you, and thank you for joining me this morning with Friday with the Rev. God bless. I'll see you next week.